I have a second channel, Cube Comp MTDX. Hey everybody, here we have a desktop computer that's in for service. Um, my neighbor found this, I forget where, but uh, it was abandoned. Somebody got rid of it. And this right here brings back memories. Yeah, this came from the uh, computer work store, the Goodwill Grid store. Hadn't been to that place in probably over a year. And if you guys are probably wondering why I don't go there much anymore, well, just look at all the stuff. <laughs> I'm going to have to purge some old stuff before I ever think about going back to that place again. <laughs> so, this thing supposedly has a Core 2 Duo CPU, 2.93 gig. It was uh, priced back in 2016 for $30, had 1 gig of RAM. Now, looking at this thing, you can tell it's, just, it's definitely seen better days. If you look at the back of it, we've got uh, the both of the uh, expansion slot covers are missing. So it makes me wonder if somebody has part of this thing out. Never want me to see if I can do anything with it, perhaps get it running. I do have <clears throat> a system similar to this out in the uh, building, but I think it's an older model. It's a, uh, so this one is a crap I can find it that'd be nice Altiplex 780 it's approximately from I want to say 2008 or 2009 it has a uh, Windows Vista product key on it for uh, Vista business so let's have a look inside this thing yeah, it's definitely been stripped of some parts for sure. Um, the RAM is completely gone. The hard drive has been taken out, so it's going to need memory. It's going to need a hard drive. CPU does seem to be intact. The heat sink doesn't feel loose. You know, sometimes people will, uh, sometimes they'll go as far as to pull the CPU. And in that case, the heat sink will be loose because it's not sitting on the processor. So, I figured what we can do now is just, um, we'll pop in some RAM. Let me see if this takes, okay, this takes DDR3. It's, uh, looks like our slots down there are showing 1.5 volts, so it's DDR3. I do have a couple of sticks of DDR3. Uh, four gigabytes worth. Though so, I've had some problems with that memory. It's just kind of it's kind of picky about motherboards and chipsets. But I do have it here. Uh, let's see if it will be enough to make this thing start up. We'll pop one stick in there. Now, of course, I do have. I do have 16 gigabytes worth of of good DDR3 here from the Mid-Tower Lux before it was upgraded in late 2017 and I have another jeez I think this is a I don't I, I, I honestly I can't remember the size of these modules I have to take them out but these were former Mid-Tower Lux memory modules now excuse me these four here were not from the Mid-Tower Lux these were these? I'm trying to remember where they came from. Honestly, I can't remember. <laughs> it's been a while, but yeah, they're definitely not that old. Anyways, I'll stick them back in there for now. We're going to stick in this single uh, 2 gigabyte module to see if we can get this thing to start. And of course, uh, we don't have a hard drive, so we won't be checking out any uh, existing OS. But I'm sure this will probably have no problem no problem running Windows 10. Man, this thing is just it's it's it has seen a beating. <laughs> I'm 
just trying to get this uh, front bezel off of here as a challenge. That didn't sound good. <laughs> this thing is, oh man, I tell you, it's just. I'll be interested to see if this thing even boots up. Now, here's something interesting. This drive says it has a manufacturer date of March 2010. <laughs> so I'm questioning, is this even the original optical drive? You know, these things, these things like a lot of newer desktops these days, they take laptop optical drives. You say your conventional uh, five and a quarter inch drive, which will be very large for a system like this. Now I have taken the bezel off of a system like this before and it wasn't all that difficult. A lot of times they incorporate it into the, uh, the same mechanism that you use to pull out the drive. Okay, the drive actually comes out this way. But it's like, man, the front bezel. <laughs> Okay, that yeah, that that makes some more sense now. I was just doing it wrong. <laughs> but yeah, this thing is definitely this thing is definitely taking a beating for sure. And obviously, the guy doesn't care how this thing <laughs> physically looks. I mean. I mean, if it runs, that's all he really cares. So, we got the optical drive out of the way, and that's another thing that's not necessary just to test this thing out. We'll just pop it in this slot right here. So this is definitely, I'd say, well, not not so certain. I was gonna say it was probably newer than Socket 775, but given the uh, given to given the uh, fact that it has a Windows Vista CLA on it, leads me to believe that it probably has a Socket 775 CPU in it. All right, so we have we have our stick of RAM in. So let's go ahead and plug this thing in and see if it'll run. Okay, as I'm about to plug this thing in, I want you to have a look at the uh, the I/O this thing offers on the back. It's a very it's it's kind of a variety of of newer stuff and older stuff. I mean, we got our we got our uh, parallel port and our serial port. We also have an SATA down here. We got VGA. Got a ton of uh, USB 2.0 ports. I'm gonna assume that's probably gigabit LAN. We got our um, sound out and a universal line in mic in port here. Yeah, I'm interested to see this thing even, even run. So, go ahead and get everything plugged up and see what it does. power supply it has is a looks to be a light on manufactured unit it is trying to see what the total wattage of it is kind of kind of tough reading it upside down yeah, that's an 80 plus silver so it's definitely not too bad there as far as efficiency goes it offers 17 amps on its 12 volt rail Yeah, these things usually don't have a lot of... The power supply usually isn't real hefty. It doesn't need to be for something like this. So you can pretty much forgive about putting a video card in it. It does offer a slot, though. Okay, let's see what this thing can do.
It starts but does not seem happy at all. Okay, I pulled the stick of RAM out and we do get a different beep error code with this, so. <laughs> That's a very, very angry sounding uh, beep this thing, uh, this thing sounds when there's a problem. So there very well could be other things going on with this uh with this thing. Pop the uh, stick of RAM back in this time in a different slot. Looks like we're getting a post this time. Huh. Well, it shut off. Let's try it again. We got life. Okay. Let's have a look here. quick enough this thing is does this thing tell it about to say uh, <laughs> system setup here we are okay it's just there it goes Yep, Core 2 Duo, E7500, 2.93 gigahertz. So I'm not sure what platform this is. I'd have to look it up and see. Okay, so here is the uh, here's the processor that we have. It's again Core 2 Duo, E7500. It is a uh, socket 775. Introduced in 2009. So this is actually a 2009 system. Um, I'm assuming it probably was, was uh, launched shortly before the release of Windows 7. That's why it has a Windows Vista COA instead of Windows 7 COA. It's a uh, Wolfdale 3M 0.45 micron. So this thing is a little bit newer than I thought it was. So. Leads me to the question of when did Dell start transitioning their uh, BIOS over to this newer style? It's holding the date uh, for the most part okay. It's probably an hour off because of uh, standard time. Okay, so this thing, um, let's see. Well, of course, I don't have any drives installed in it. Yeah, it's interesting. I didn't know Dell had um, started using this style of BIOS this early on. Very nice to see, because, uh, yeah, we didn't really have, um, at least not the common UEFI uh, BIOS that you see nowadays, probably until about the time of Windows 8 come out, or maybe a year or two before. It was, so this is, again, 2009 system, so I guess... I mean, I, I guess we are getting close to that point. Anyways. Yeah, the video is just uh, the onboard Intel HD graphics, I assume. Not that great, but it'll, it'll do for basic stuff. So, yeah. Um... <clears throat> I don't think there's really too much more to see here. Um, it runs. <laughs> to my amazement, this thing's been, well, it's been 
beat half to death, but uh, still works. And that's the neat thing about these uh, these business class Dell machines is a lot of them seem nearly indestructible. One thing I do like about how uh, Dell designed this machine is you see this cooling fan here that helps keep the hard drive cool. Um, yeah, for one thing, they put the hard drive in a plastic carrier, so you end up missing out on the normal uh, heat sink that you get from your system chassis to help cool the hard drive. So the fan definitely helps. And it also helps cool the uh, Norbridge down there as well. So definitely not a bad design there. So what I'll be doing with this thing is I'll be adding some more RAM to it, probably 4 gigs. Give it a total of probably, I'd say, 4 gigs of memory. Slap a hard drive in it and... uh so I can get this thing going for my neighbor that way I have a desktop to use. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Well guys, that's it for this one. But it doesn't have to be. There's plenty more videos on the channel to check out. Also, if you liked the video, please click the like button. And if you absolutely hated it, there is the alternative button as well. But yeah, please subscribe to the channel. I definitely appreciate it. And remember to click the bell so that we get notified of all updates. Also, if you're interested in things aside from computers and technology, check out my second channel. It's CubeCompMTDX. Over there you'll find videos about weather, elevators, bicycling, and pretty much whatever else I figure out to upload. So yeah, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. And thank you for your support.